Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Resilient Advisor Show. My name is Jay Coulter, and joining me today is Christian Magoon of Amplify ETFs, and we are going to talk about disruptive ETFs in the marketplace today. Our mission at Resilient Advisor is to have a significant impact on the retirement crisis by educating and empowering financial advisors to better serve their clients. We bring you industry thought leaders and experts to help you make a difference in the lives of your clients. Christian Magoon is the CEO of Amplify ETFs, and they have been on a tear lately. In 2020, they had two of the top five performing ETFs. And just this week, they crossed $5 billion in assets under management in five years. Christian has also been a part of the launch of over 70 ETFs. So he's the perfect guest to come on and talk about disruptive ETFs. Christian, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, thanks for having me, Jay. It's great to uh, be on here and uh, congratulations on all you're doing. I can see you're making a difference for advisors and issuers. So kudos to you. Thank you. I really do appreciate it. And if anybody is watching this broadcast live on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, or YouTube, and you'd like to ask Christian a question, simply type it in the comment section and our virtual studio will push it through to me and I'll pose it to Christian. So Christian, let's start with this. What are advisors today in April of 2021 not paying attention to in the ETF space that they should? Hey, it's a great question, Jay. I think maybe two um, uh, areas I'd push out. One is I think there's a big focus on expense ratios in the ETF space. Uh, many ETFs are used in advisory models, and uh, we hear a lot of advisors who gravitate towards the lowest cost ETF. And uh, that can sometimes be a mistake because there are differences in performance in an ETF. And you can see some of these ETFs that are in, quote unquote, the same category have differences of 5, 10, 20, 50 percent in terms of performance due to their index methodology. And if you're just looking at buying the lowest cost product, you may be leaving a lot on the table for your clients and ultimately your business, especially if you're fee based. On the other side, and it's kind of related, is looking at ETFs in a, in a category and not realizing the underlying index methodology and their portfolio differences. Uh, you really need to, uh, I think, utilize a tool, maybe like an ETF action tool, a software that's going to show you the underlying holdings and differences with, within different ETFs in a similar category. You'd be shocked to see uh, uh, maybe all the cloud computing ETFs and in, in look at their overlap. And in some cases, there's very little overlap, maybe 10 to 15 percent overlap between six different ETFs in the same category. So looking at the underlying holdings, understanding the selection methodology might be the key to un unlocking some additional alpha for advisors. It takes some time. I don't think you should do it by hand. I think you need to use a software in you know, my, my world. I think ETF Action probably provides the easiest way to do that. So those are my two uh, uh, areas that I would tell advisors to pay a little bit more attention to. Hopefully that not only benefits their clients, but it comes back and benefits their business as well. Yeah, Christian, that's great advice. I've had Mike Akins, the CEO of ETF Action, on the show in the past. I recommended that tool several times to advisors as they were looking at breaking away and existing independent advisors as they're looking for new resources to look at their portfolio uh, construction. Visit ETFaction.com. They're not a sponsor. Christian and I apparently are just fans of, <laughs> of Mike and his team and the work they're doing. Yes. So Christian, when I look at last year, you guys had great performance in a couple of your ETFs, but it was really a surprise to most folks in the space. Obviously, the market shot back up and recovered very, very well, but there was a lot of other things going on in the marketplace. What surprised you the most in 2020? Well, COVID was a big surprise. Um, you know, for us, we had launched two years before COVID a black swan ETF uh, because we really felt like these types of you know black swan risks do occur from time to time. We wanted to have something in our product line to address kind of these sudden market drops. We knew that we couldn't address the exact risk 
uh, that potentially could come uh, to cause a black swan, but we thought we could address kind of the market type event, a 20% or more decline, and that's why we launched the black swan ETF. And that was a big surprise to see uh, an event happen so quickly, and certainly the black swan ETF you know, held up with the S&P down over 30%. Black Swan during that crisis was down only about 5%. But on the flip side, Jay, was the unbelievable rebound we saw in the equity market. And, you know, for us, we have the first online retail ETF and online sales just exploded. We saw about two to three years of increased sales activity happen all just last year. And it was great for that segment. I buy is our ETF there. So we didn't expect for online retail to uh, see such accelerated growth but it did. We also saw other businesses and exposures we have, like, for example, cannabis, uh, our cannabis ETF. We saw b cannabis for the first time be declared an essential business in many states, which really elevated the, um, the attractiveness of that segment. And certainly the other area that was maybe a little surprised that we didn't expect was all this uh, kind of the bailout money, the stimulus, and the impact it had on crypto and blockchain related stocks. Uh, you know, having uh, the largest and, you know, best performing crypto uh, sensitive ETF, the blockchain ETF ticker BLOK, that benefited. So uh, COVID really created this disruptive event. And, you know, fortunately, we had several different strategies and themes that were really able to take advantage in a way that we hadn't really planned uh, several years ago when we launched most of, the, most of these products. Yeah. Timing is everything sometimes, isn't it, Christian? <laughs> <laughs> let's, leak, let's use that as a segue into BLOK. So for anybody watching this that's unfamiliar with the ETF, walk them through uh, what the these investment thesis is and how it's different. Yeah, so in 2018, we really wanted to provide a way for investors to easily access this new technology that we sim we thought it was similar to the internet in terms of its impact, and that's called blockchain technology. Now think back, Jay, to the internet. You know, you and I were around before the internet existed, and when we first discovered the internet, we really discovered it probably due to some applications using internet technology. So that was maybe email, that might have been a web browser, and then we realized that was all built on the internet. Consequently, all these other new businesses have been built on the internet, like e-commerce, video streaming, advertising, etc. Well, blockchain is kind of similar. Uh, most of us encountered blockchain from one application, and that application is noisy, it's loud, it's talked about a lot, and it's called cryptocurrency. That's an application built on blockchain technology, but we know there's many other use cases for blockchain technology. So we created a fund that would invest in publicly traded companies that were either developing blockchain technology, uh, were a leading investor in blockchain technology, private and public applications, were heavily involved in the research consortiums around blockchain technology, Technology. And, and that ETF is Block, B-L-O-K. It's an actively managed product by Toroso and Asset Management, they're their sub-advisor, and they're buying and selling companies based off their sensitivity and exposure to blockchain in general, which includes cryptocurrency. So a lot of people are like, are there cryptocurrency stocks out there? And we certainly know, yes, there are. There are companies like uh, Silvergate. There are companies that are likely coming to market this week, like Coinbase, uh, companies that are operating exchanges, are at, serve as custodians, uh, maybe have payment systems uh, that uh, deal in cryptocurrency. But there are other companies that also have blockchain technology exposure. Uh, these are more broad-based. Uh, think of them as like IBM, for example. So when you look at the block portfolio, it's an ETF that really focuses on blockchain and crypto-sensitive stocks. Um, it's over a billion dollar fund here now, three plus years later, five star rated by Morningstar. It fits in the technology category, according to them. It's been a top tier performer and it has about a 0.7 correlation to cryptocurrency. Believe it or not, Block, uh, the ETF has even outperformed GBTC, the Grayscale, Grayscale Bitcoin uh, Trust, uh, since its uh, Block's inception. So it's a way for advisors to kind of bet on the future of blockchain technology and crypto through an equity portfolio uh, that they'd be used to. An analogy that some people use is if you're all familiar with the gold ETF, GLD, there's also the pick and axe play, which is the gold mining ETFs. This is similar to a pick and axe play on, on cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. 
technology. And the great news is this portfolio is getting even more and more pure because of these new IPOs and direct listings. My guess is if you go to blocketf.com, you look at the top 10 holdings, there's probably six or seven that you don't own in any of your other portfolios. It's a kind of a unique diversifier and a way for advisors to get exposure to their, for their clients to blockchain and crypto. So Christian, I recently had an opportunity to speak with Mike Venusio, the portfolio manager of the sub-advisor for Block of Toroso Investments. And what I found interesting, and this was a learning exercise for me, is it's globally diversified, only about 50% here in the United States. The active management component is part of their edge because really doing your own research in this space makes a difference. And their team is international in nature, and they're able to get boots on the ground experience and access to the portfolio management teams of their holdings, which is different than most ETFs. You know, that's right, Jay. Um, so we have index-based ETFs and we have active ETFs. Generally, we our default is to launch an index-based ETF because most advisors are comfortable with that. Most institutions like those rules. However, there's certain investment strategies like our five-star you know, uh, income ETF with that CWP manages, Devo, uh, where they're utilizing the covered call aspect that really have to be active. Uh, there's uh, also market segments that are moving so quickly that you get an edge by being active. And that would be in the blockchain crypto space, as well as in the cannabis space. So we've uh, uh, selected several ETF approaches to be active just to make sure that we're able to execute in those market segments or those underlying strategies. And Mike Venuto and his team at Troso have done a great job. Uh, they've been all over the world, uh, even into Iceland to uh, visit some uh, Bitcoin mining facilities. So that's a great edge. And um, you, know, you can see it in the performance of Block um, outperforming the S&P, outperforming the NASDAQ, outperforming GBTC since its launch over three years ago. For podcast listeners that cannot see the graphics on the screen, please visit blocketf.com. That's blocketf.com to learn a little bit more about the Block ETF. Let's switch gears to the cannabis ETF, symbol CNBS. What's the investment thesis? What's the ETF exposure for financial advisors? Well, you know, I think, you know, we try to focus in our thematics on uh, disruptive events and these disruptive events could be demographics. Uh, they could be consumer attitudes. Uh, they could also be legal rules, legal regulation. And cannabis is one that's really an area that's seeing significant disruption when it comes to kind of legalization and, um, you know, state and federal province uh, type rules. So we believe that the cannabis space um, has the potential to be similar to other spaces, including uh, tobacco, including alcohol, in terms of uh, being a consumer product brand, a category of companies that deliver um, some of those um, same kind of uh, uh, business uh, focuses that alcohol and tobacco have. However, in addition to that, we think cannabis has some unique purposes uh, especially when it comes to CBD and other cannabinoids uh, in the spaces of kind of the pharmaceutical area. So anxiety, uh, sleep, um, depression, uh, inflammation. So when you look at kind of the potential for the cannabis industry, um, it's not just um, as big as what, you know, alcohol and tobacco could be as like an adult use. It has medic medicinal purposes. And we're seeing, you know, quite a bit of that play out right now just in CBD. But we think there's an increasingly large market and other compounds that will come from cannabis. So overall, we think the cannabis space is going to be, you know, kind of a big deal because it encompasses so many existing sectors. Um, and what's happening now is about 68% of adults here in the U.S. want to see full legalization. And indeed, about 70% of adults can access cannabis one way or the other, either for uh, medicinal purposes uh, or for adult use. And we see not only states repealing this, but ultimately the federal government. And certainly the election uh, on November of, in November of last year made a big difference. And maybe more recently, uh, the Georgia Senate election here in January even uh, pushed um, the blue wave even further. We think that there's going to be increasing um, acceptance in legislation that's pro-cannabis. 
and that is going to bring that sector into um, a must-own sector and one that institutions uh, are going to be able to own. Right now, you know, mostly retail investors are kind of focused in that area because many institutions have issues due to uh, cannabis being on a Schedule One from a federal government standpoint and some of the kind of uh, disconnect between laws on the state level and the federal level. Uh, we think that a lot of that is going to go away, uh, that banking laws are going to be modernized and cannabis is going to be a mainstream industry. So we've created a, a fund that's actively managed by an, an industry expert in the space, uh, Tim Seymour from Seymour Asset Management. You may recognize his, his name from being one of the fast money traders, one of the original CNBC uh, uh, stars of that show. He's still on there today, has a ton of experience in cannabis, sits on the boards of several private companies, has been investing in the cannabis space uh, for many years now, and he's actively managing CNBS. And lo and behold, he's got the number one performing uh, cannabis ETF this year in the marketplace. It's actually the second best performing ETF in the United States this year. Last year, he did a great job, was second best performing cannabis uh, ETF of all of the, I think, six cannabis ETFs that are out there. So he's an expert that's buying and selling on a daily basis. You can track his portfolio at cnbsetf.com. You can see what he's buying and selling on a daily basis. We think this is an area that is emerging as another disruptive trend and an area that institutions are going to be catching up on in the near future as federal legislation progresses here under the Biden administration. For podcast listeners, if you did not catch that, cnbsetf.com to learn out more information about Tim Seymour's uh, ETF with the folks at Amplify. So blockchain, disruptive. <laughs> Cannabis investing, disruptive. <laughs> potato investing is looking for yield. And for all the baby boomers today and interest rates where they are, finding yield is incredibly difficult. And you have a ETF on your roster called Devo, the Enhanced Dividend Income ETF, symbol D-I-V-O. What is the investment thesis? What would financial advisors capture if they allocated to it in their models? Yeah, Jay. So this is like a meat and potatoes strategy um, that gives you a, a surprisingly high amount of income. So these are essentially it's a portfolio that's actively managed by Capital Wealth Planning. Kevin Simpson, CEO and CIO there, who I think has been on the show before. They're selecting a blue chip group of companies that are quite similar to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. These are name brand blue chip companies that pay dividends and, and more importantly, are growing their dividends over time. So that's kind of the basic tenant of the portfolio. And initially it's like, okay, big deal. You know, what, what's so special about it? Well, some of the secret sauce here is that they also have the ability to tactically write covered calls on the individual stocks in the portfolio. Uh, they don't do it all the time. Not every stock is covered. They're really trying to uh, take advantage of, of, of di pricing dislocations and market sentiment. And what that does historically is it produces uh, a portfolio of blue chip companies that are yielding dividends plus cover call income of around four to seven percent historically. So Devo uh, is the ETF that is managed by Kevin Simpson and CWP and tracks that strategy, yields just a little over five percent. You can go to our website. Uh, the one unique thing about the SEC yield is it doesn't count option income. So you'll see a lower SEC yield, but a little bit higher than a five percent distribution yield because that factors in the option income. So you know many advisors we talk to may own a dividend ETF that's paying maybe two, two and a half percent, and maybe it's somewhat high quality. Um, they take a look at Devo and say, wait a second, this is higher quality than what I own, and it's paying maybe two, two and a half percent more income to my clients. But this is a nice way to complement my existing dividend e ETF exposure. And the great thing about Devo is it's a proven methodology. There's a long-term SMA that's five-star rated that this ETF is based on. And lo and behold, dividend is a five Devo is a five-star rated ETF. So um, you can have, I think, faith in kind of the expertise of the team and the strategy and certainly look at historical data uh, going back about four years now on, on Devo. Uh, so we think this is very additive, especially in an age where investors are really searching for some material income. For podcast listeners, visit AmplifyETFs.com forward slash D-I-V-O to learn out more to learn more information about Devo. 
One thing that Kevin said on my podcast last year that I thought really hit home is covered calls work when you need them the most. And so that's what's really, in addition to the yield that it produces today, something that's really helpful and unique about that product. Christian, I, our time is up. This has been really informative. You know, your wealth of experience in the ETF industry just comes through as we have these conversations. Enjoyed learning about blockchain, cannabis, covered call writing. Is there anything else you think listeners should know about Amplify ETFs? You know, we have uh, thematic ETFs, we have uh, income ETFs, and then we have core or hedged ETFs. So we have kind of a variety of different ETFs. We think that most of our ETFs involve strategies or market segments that would be quite additive to almost any advisor's portfolio. And we're happy to speak in more detail with any advisor who wants to reach out with us. Uh, even happy to connect with them, uh, connect them to some of the sub advisors that actively manage these products. So we think that once you kick the tires, you're going to be pretty excited about what we have to offer here at Amplify. Thanks, Jay. I really appreciate being on the show and congratulations again. I think this is a great uh, show that you're uh, bringing out a lot of in interesting information for advisors and investors and look forward to doing more with you in the future. Christian, I appreciate you coming on. Listeners and viewers, Visit AmplifyETFs.com. That is AmplifyETFs.com to learn more information.